So you're ready to assemble your new motor, but have you done your pre-assembly check? If you don't know what that is, we're about to dig into it, and we'll talk about plastic gauge. That and more when we get back. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Chop Tour Reviews. We're doing a build on an LS engine for one of our shop trucks, uh, but really a lot of this can apply to really any motor that you're rebuilding, especially on the pre-assembly side. We'll be specific on a lot of LS stuff since it is a 5.3 LS motor that we're doing. However, again, on the pre-assembly stuff, as far as checking bearings, uh, using plastic gauge, as long as it has a rotating assembly like a crankshaft and rods, then the same idea will still work for you. Now, plastic gauge is something that kind of takes the place, uh, that's not a good word, um, it will alleviate you having to buy a lot of expensive tools. So I'm not pointing you away from buying expensive tools and some of these things you can buy pretty cheap. Uh, but again, it's not a necessity for you to put a motor together to have, you know, vernier calipers and uh, dial indicators and micrometers and things like that. Um, and what will get you by a lot of times is plastic gauge. Now, Hopefully you've probably taken your motor to the machine shop, make sure the bores are okay, make sure the, uh, um, the, all the uh, crankshaft bores are okay and the camshafts and things like that. But still, once you get it back and you're gonna build it, well, you kind of need to validate that everything the machinist did is correct. And you don't wanna put something together that you've already spent some money on and find out that it locks up or you have problems or you have uh, premature wear, rods knocking, cranks knocking, things like that. So this plastic gauge, which by the way, $2.90 or three bucks for a stick of this. Um, and I've already done a complete motor with this. So you see how long this will last you. So for three bucks, really cheap insurance to actually check the clearance or the tolerance on the main bearings and the, and the rod bearings as well. Now, I actually was seeing if I could use a set of the, of the used main bearings because they re looked really good. And I thought, you know what? If they fall within that tolerance of, of what the manufacturer says for, for kind of the service life, I'm going to use them. Now the rod bearings, they got a little more wear on them that I can see. So I'm going to replace these. But anyway, let's get over and take a look at how we use this plastic gauge and how well it worked for us and see if we can reuse those bearings. Now we've got an LS 5.3 here sitting on the engine stands, already been machined. Uh, it's already cleaned, dust free, no lube on it whatsoever. It's ready for, uh, for basically pre-installation. Um, so we're going to do a pre-check basically of the bearing clearances and so forth. Uh, and you can see we've got a nice clean area set up here. Uh, so we make sure we're not incorporating any dirt from our tools or any dirt from the parts. Um, and you see we've got some bearings sitting back there. So, But the tool tip today is using this right here. This is Plastic Gauge. If you haven't ever used it, really cool product. Um, if you're a machinist, you probably have a lot of tools like this, vernier calipers and uh, dial indicators, uh, uh, bore, bore sizing tools um, uh, or bore indicators, um, uh, micrometers, uh, all sorts of typically high dollar tools that you probably and, and may not have. Uh, well, that's maybe, let's say, the best way to do things. This, the second best way is to just kind of validate, and, and by the way, the plastic gauge can validate what's going on with with your measurements as well because with your measuring tools you're going to measure the basically diameter of the uh, main journals diameter of the rod journals and then measure the bore of the of the main caps and so forth um, but the plastic gauge we're going to use with the bearings and it's going to validate whether we're in spec or not or whether we're in tolerance of what the factory says is acceptable um, for lubricating this engine uh, so again, we've got our bearings laid out. And by the way, I'm trying to see if I can use my old used bearings. I know you're probably saying, what in the world? 40, 50, 60, 100 bucks, you can have brand new bearings. I know, I absolutely know. But I'm just checking something and I'll let you know at the end. Uh, but anyway, I've got a set of used bearings back there. I've got my plastic gauge there. I've got the main caps back here. I've got the block here. So let's go ahead and throw this thing together real quick. And let's use that plastic gauge to see uh, what those tolerances look like on these existing used bearings. I've already got my center thrust bearing, my thrust bearing in there, thrust half. And then I'm going to put my other mains in. And by the way, show you real quick to make sure you don't mess up. The block, the, the, the main half that goes in the block looks like this because it's got a hole for that oil galley there. And the other side of the, of the other half of the main does not. So this is going to go on the cap side. And you can see, and then your little groove there is going to fit 
as well as in this groove. So I'm going to line up this edge here and then we can push this one down. Make sure it gets nice and square in there. And by the way, you don't want any lube and you want to make sure this is clean, clean, clean. If you need to, take you some brake cleaner, say you take you some acetone, some lacquer thinner, uh, whatever your favorite solvent is, and actually use it to, uh, to clean these and clean the back halves of the bearings if you haven't done so. Okay, so we're in there. We're nice and clean. Be careful when you're setting this in and you do not want to rotate this. We're putting this in dry. We're not using any oil. We don't want to rotate this engine. We want to press these caps on and check uh, that plastic gauge and that's all we want to do. Do not rotate this again. We don't have any oil on here right now and we want it that way. Actually, I'm going to pick this up and rotate it a little bit because what I have here I've got these oil holes here and I don't want those in the way of my plastic gauge. So I'm going to pick this crank up and I'm going to rotate a little bit, but I'm not going to spin it on those bearings because those bearings are dry. So now we're sitting on our bearings and now I'll give you a little trick here for using this plastic gauge. What this plastic gauge is, is a little thin plastic rod. And you'll see here when I peel open this paper here, there it is right there. That's all that is. And it's kind of glued to that piece of paper there. And we want to keep that piece of paper. Leave that here. And then we're just going to lay it on that journal. So we'll lay it here on the back. We don't want it too long. Don't want it too short either because we want a kind of a reading all the way across that, that journal. So now, as you can see, we can basically take this and we can cut these to size and we again we don't want them too long or too short but i can just cut the paper and all and each one of these is a measurement here so you can see you have your tolerance there so that's telling you your clearance that's why the wider it is the tighter the tolerance is and also be careful because on one side is inches and on the other side is millimeters or metric Okay, got all five in there. One, two, three, four, and five. Then we're gonna take our mains. And by the way, on an LS, really easy. It's already numbered for you. Uh, so number one, two, three, four, and five. Just like the four. Number three is gonna be a thrust bearing. We'll make sure we get our thrust bearing on right, which it only has a, an indicator on one side. Make sure we get that pressed on really good. Oh, by the way, on the LS, all your numbers on the main caps will be down this one side, except for number five and be on the opposite side. So to get number five, instead of the number being over here, it is going to be over here. And it's pretty easy to realize because that webbing is not going to point out the back of the block. You want that nice flushness here. And now we're still a little proud. All right. So our first round is at 20, 20 newton meters or 15 foot pounds. And actually my torque wrench here has both has newton meters on the top 15 and foot pounds in the bottom I'm going to run these in with my little impact driver and now I'm going to get some hate on that but as you can see, it's 
I'm gonna torque these all at 15 foot pounds. Okay, we got an all torqued at 15 foot pounds or 20 newton meters. Now there are side 10 millimeter bolts that go in the uh, the side webs of the uh, of the main caps, but I'm not worried about those. I know again we're going to have some haters that say you have to do that. You don't. It's not going to change our torquing or basically checking the clearance on these caps. Yes, it helps the strength with the rotating assembly, but it's not helping right here or not hurting right here either. Now, since these are Tortillo bolts, the inners get additional 80 degrees. Now that they're set at 20 newton meters or at 15 foot pounds, the inners get 80 degrees additional rotation and the outers get 51 degrees additional rotation. So we're on the inner. That needs to get the 80 degrees. So, by the way, make sure you're not touching your, your journals of your crankshaft. And so, and there's my additional 80. Now, because I know where 90 is, 80 is just a little bit shy, right? It is a motor that I'm putting together with used bearings, so. So now they're all torqued. Let's pull them off, check out the plastic gate. Okay, so let's uh, take out these mains and see. By the way, sometimes LS's can be a pain. They make a puller for these, but You'll take a 3 8 bar and go back to here to this pad and go back here. And just that's all she did. And so you see a little bit of an impression here, and you also see, also see an impression, sorry for the wild ride, right there as well. And so that's what we'll be taking a measurement of. So we'll set this up right here. And we'll see here. Uh, a little wider. Than two. Yeah, about two thousandths clearance. So we're well within spec. If we're below 25 or even 30, we're within spec. A little bit smaller than one thou. A little bit smaller than one and a half, or a little bit bigger than one and a half. Uh, I'd say we're between one and a half and two thousandths all the way across. So we're still well within factory spec for these main bearings. And by the way, these are 300,000 miles on. Uh, so let's check the rest of these. Looks about the same here. So again, we're a little bit smaller than one, right about one and a half, um, between one and a half and two thousandths. Um, so we're still, again, well within spec on this journal as well. And that's the, that's the thrust bearing. And let's take out number two here. Still looking good. Make sure we're on the, yep, the inches there. So not one, again, looks a little bit larger than one and a half. Um, so one and a half to two thousandths is where we're at on that. So all of them between one and a half and two thousandths, which again, puts us well within spec or well within tolerance to, uh, to reuse these these bearings. And, and one of the things I'm really liking that I'm seeing 
is I'm seeing an even size all the way across. If this thickness changed as it went across the bearing face, I'd be concerned because we'd see we'd have some sort of uh, you know angle on the bearings or angle some wear abnormal wearing on one side or the other. But that's a nice even uniform thickness across. Again, uh, that's less than two thousandths clearance, but right about one and a half thousandths clearance on that. And then we'll check the rear. Again on the final one. We're still here, uh, right about one and a half thousandths. So really great to see that. Um, actually, you know what? All these are between one and one and a half thousandths. They're really not, they're all a little bit bigger than one and a half thousandths. So they're really uh, well within spec here. Again, for 300,000 miles on these bearings, that's a testament to good oil changes. So that's how you use plastic gauge. This is very, very cheap. We're talking like three bucks for that stick. And it can save you a lot of potential hurdles uh, down the road. Check, make sure that all your journals, both your rods, both your mains as well, um, are within the tolerance that the factory recommends uh, to be reusing bearings or even when you have machine work done to ensure that your, that your crank, that your rods are ready to go in. So the bearings actually checked out, as I mentioned a couple of times, 300,000 miles on those bearings and still well within the tolerance and service limits uh, of their useful life. And again, you may say, no way that I'm, I'm, I'm using 300,000 mile bearings, and that's fine. It's absolutely fine. Spend your 40, 50, 100 bucks, depending on what type of bearings you're going to buy and where you're going to buy them. Uh, I mean, go ahead and replace those. You, you can't go wrong with that. I'm taking the chance. I think they'll be just fine and, and we'll follow up and let you know. Uh, again, plastic gauge, really cheap insurance. So, and really neat how it works. And, and really it's more to than just taking the measurements there. Again, get a good eyeball at kind of how it falls all the way across the bearing face and make sure you don't have any variances in that width across that. Uh, that'll tell you a lot of things as well. Um, but again, really cheap insurance. Make sure you check that out. And by the way, doing a whole series on this. So we'll have part two soon. This is part one. Have a great day. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Go out and do something nice for someone.